Welcome, ladies and gents, to Face the TV. I'm Didi Kane. This is Seth. He's stepping in for James today. How's it going? I'm doing fine, thank you. Yeah, I'm good. I'm really excited. We have Oceana matches. This is the first time we're going to do uh, Oceana in this uh, in this new league here. So, really excited because we never. We, I don't think generally the Counter Strike Go scene really gets to see enough matches mm. from from that region. Definitely. So it's really, really, really exciting. First up, we have Avant Garde. Um, and versus um, Trident. So this this match will be really really interesting because uh, there's been a lot of, of um, switching in the lineups going on, and uh, we have a new AWPer here for Avant Garde, and that's that's going to be a really really key change for them. Um, his his name is like Five HP or Sheep is what we're going to call him. And uh, and first of all, I just want to give shout outs to to Willy actually because uh, Willy has has been my little informant in the in the scene there, especially in Australia, and he's been giving me a lot of information, which is really awesome. Um, but yes, so uh, and Trident themselves have a new in-game leader in uh, Steve STV. So it's gonna be really interesting to see how how he's going to affect affect his team who previously needed guidance, and he is there to provide that. So in this best of one format, it is definitely going to be. Anybody's guess who's going to come out on top, but it's going to be an interesting match nonetheless. Do you have any anything? Because it's hard to have expectations, yeah. but um, I think if they play their new AWPer well and they uh they they employ some good tactics with him, if he's holding down on sites, especially on CT side, if he's as skilled as they say he is, I think I think it'll prevail. Definitely. So I'm I'm just I'm just really hyped for this. We have a uh, Dust Two coming out, so it's a really nice map to kick things off. And uh, of course, unlike uh, the, the North American portion of the league and the European one, we don't have the home. Uh, home away system with the maps, unfortunately. Uh, hopefully next time we can get that going. So that means each team only plays each other once in best of one. So that's pretty brutal because, of course, there's six teams and only the top one will go to the LAN, uh, the LAN finals. And that's, that's, that's kind of gutting for, for some of these teams. Oh, yeah. but, but, you know, at, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's actually quite exciting as well because every single team is going to be really, really heavily contesting that top one spot, which Vox have been occupying largely. And Vox, are, you know, are going to have to, like, reassert themselves here to say, you know, we are still the best in, in, this, uh, in this entire region. And anyone else who's got interest to challenge that is, is going gonna, is gonna to basically fall to us. So I'm, I'm really curious to see what's going to happen with, with all the... Cause, because the thing is about this scene is that, and when we previously did the stream here, it was super entertaining because these guys are like ridiculously good aimers yeah. and they have so much individual skills. So at least we know that we're going to see some sick, some sick action uh, in this match. I think as it's best of ones, they're going to be like trying to play very hard. They're going to be pushing in. I think we're going to see some good tactics employed. I mean, if they don't get those early rounds, in, especially the pistol round, I'm sure we'll see some good tactics coming out. Best of one. Only one attempt. Absolutely. And uh, as far as uh, player to watch goes for, for Trident, um, been informed that uh, Diggs is the man to, to be watching for out for here as he's, he's a bit of an aim star, a bit of a, a bit of a well, essentially a aim star, someone who's going to be opening up the map for them, someone who's going to be making his entries, somebody who's going to basically be, uh, be creating all the opportunities for Trident. And uh, as far as, as, far as uh, Avant Garde goes, uh, we do have Has and Chris as the players to watch. We'll have to see how that, how that develops um, as we go into the match here. This is the first match for yeah, the Oceania okay. Face It League. Avant Guard versus Trident on Dust 2. Going to be kicking things off here. And, uh, well, not much more to, to do other than just let the action unfold. Dev K, the, uh, the leader here for his respective team. Looks like Trident pushing into tunnels. Coming out onto B site, we've got exerts picking from uh, doors. Lovely play. So already some uh, good damage done here as they try to make their way in the side. The bomb does go down though, so two on four situation. As you can see Zert's trying to pick his way into the site. So, uh, now challenging, he's got support from his teammates. PTG on the other hand is just all the way on the other side of the map. They're going to drop down the CT spawn with the Deagle and see what he Lovely can get. Lovely headshot there. <laughs> see if he's going to go down and uh, what other shenanigans can be pulled out of the bag here by PTG with this Deagle. Again, I've been warned to look out for such plays here. PTG in another quick one-on-one -on -one here. He needs to get shot in the side here. Does take down one more player. Only 19 HP there. Looks like if he picks the window player, they've fallen back onto site. Got Exert playing from the back. That's good here from Shaz. And uh, it's not trying to take any untoward risks at the moment, trying to just play safe. They know that this round could be blown up by PTG, as unlikely as it would seem with the health that he's on at the moment, but he is going to go down. They get a couple extra frags 
Though with the Deagle that were slightly unexpected, which is going to land him on $2,000. So he himself is going to be able to purchase a, a scout if he, if he wants to. And the uh, same can be said for Dev K as well. But looks like just the pistol armor uh, all around for uh, for Trident in this round. As we have Famuses loaded up on the avant garde side. Up a Dark Take hit coming in from... Uh, from Avant Garde, and they're going to see absolutely nothing here. So that's quite in an interesting development because Stevie's actually like waiting down by Lower Dark. He already checked up a Dark. He's seen nothing there. So Shad's over by Long might be expecting something. But so far, still nothing much seen. Stevie going to slowly peek up, gets his head shot off there as Trident now have the Dark area. And the entire lineup has been spotted. So Avant Garde now have a much better idea. And you can see the smokes are coming in now. Trying to stop any rush from them. But they are not going to be deterred here. Going to go straight through the smoke here. Smokes of their own. Uh, and good crossfire to deal with that one. So that's like a hard times coming in here. Trying to actually 2 on 3 now. But that's on the plateau. Able to take down the last two players. And that's going to be a good defense. And uh, only losing play two players. players. Yeah. They're holding it pretty well. I think one more eco from Trident. And uh, they should be. Hopefully getting on track. If they pull out a few uh, few frags, it'll be good damaging their economy. Yeah, I, li I like that. Uh, that's that's risk early on from Stevie just pushing straight up. I mean, you get that close range, that play on the close range there, so that can obviously be problematic against the pistols. But it gave them so much information, and once again, they're going for a similar play. They got Zerts uh, pushing lower dark, and also they're pushing around to T spawn as well. So they're going incredibly they aggressive. Taken out there on the anti eco. Sheep managing to take out Stevie there on mid with the Glock. Lovely headshot by him. So, so far, so good here for Avant Garde. They've only lost one player, but in comes the flanking player here with the MP7. It's going to be a lot of cash in the bank. It up. Only one player down for uh, Avant. So, 3 0 now, and we're going to get the buy coming out from Trident. And we're going to have a bit of a pause. So, uh, already interesting to see the propensity for aggression um, as we had the, the push through through lower and and upper dark in the previous round. And 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 it's strangely, I, I guess it's, it is it is quite a big risk because you know that in the in the second round when the team didn't this, the T team didn't actually get the bomb down that they're going to be going for that pistol armor and just to push in and be up against the close ranges because there's very likely going to be like at least a couple players going their pistols and the famous is is okay but against you know tech running tech nines you've always got to be careful but it did give the key information there for avant garde to actually understand exactly where everyone on trident was so that enabled them to to have a good picture so i would like to see how this aggressive style develops for avant garde are they going to keep going for these really high progressive places are there going to be a lot of uh, lower and upper dark takes is that that's a really exciting way to play the game and it's something... Um, Avent definitely aren't afraid, though. They seem to be uh, pulling out the risk but high reward tactics. I yeah, think, and it's, it's paying off. It's definitely paying off. This, this will be the man to watch now, I think. Let's see what Sheep can do with the orb. Yeah, um, Avent uh, with with Sheep, that has... The, the kind of putting him into the lineup has changed their dynamics as a team and, and shifted some of the roles that the players... Um, are playing now, so they're not going to be as set, as comfortable, as firm in their roles as they previously previously were before Sheep joined the lineup. So this is going to be something that uh, is is um, going to develop over time. But we'll have to see how well they've adapted so far to putting Sheep in as a dedicated orper. Somebody that came from uh, Team Fortress 2 previously and was the top player there for three years. So interesting to see him make this jump over. And he does already get a tag there through the doors onto Ares. So that's uh, a good good opening bit of damage there from Sheep. And we do have the, the good old peeking. Noah stack here in, in the uh, middle by the double doors. Good nade over there. That's a massive amount of damage there to Stevie. Down to 48. That's a perfect grenade. Still holding despite this smoke going away, that Noah stack there by the double doors to catch those players as they move for that uh, cat control. But Sheep, oh, he just, just sees a sliver there from Stevie. Wondering if Stevie will peek. Oh, a great response. Shot. The actions are really good here. We have that uh, more orb coming in there. 
Good stuff there, playing with the barrels. Not the most common position for an author, I've got to say, but works out in the end for Trice. They, they only lost one player there, actually, so that's, that's a pretty huge result, considering that uh, that was the first buy round for Avant Garde there. And I mean, you can see Avant Garde going for that picky based style, but just uh, outplayed on the execution. So, uh, Avant Garde. Also going to be, uh, you know, that's pr probably going to be one of the, the hardest things for them, you know, not settling into the new roles. Huge uh, amount of damage there, only knocking, knocking them down to 20 HP. We've got Exerts taking out uh, PTG in lower dark. He's going all over mid. With only one guy left for Avantgarde. We've got Sheep here with the AWP, uh, Deagle even. The, the mini AWP. <laughs> the mini AWP indeed. That works. With um, a lovely one Deagle on to Shadsky. Alright, so now Shadz is down. And she just claimed himself an AK. He does have Kevlar as well, so might be able to inflict some extra damage here to the Trident lineup. He's got a minute to play with, and damage is the name of the game for him. He can remove some of those weapons. We can already see that uh, Trident are starting to build up money here. We've got loads of cash on Zertz, who has only died once so far. So an extra couple of frags here would be a really, really good, good result. And he doesn't have to... He d he's not really interested in saving this because they have so much money from the, the round bonus. And you can see that already they're going to be buying next round. That He needs to really just go for some frags here. Spot Stevie on mid. Just about gets the pick there. Any reason uh, to get left? I could see a pick there. How that name is supposed to work here. <laughs> you have to bear with me on that one, but uh, is that Diggs? Diggs? I'm yes. Sure. Is, is it Diggs? Yes, of course it's Diggs. It's, of course. Of course it's Diggs. I'm so stupid. Right, <laughs> forgive me, guys. My ignorance. But there we go. So Diggs with the AWP as well as that. Uh, so two, the, the two orbs are uh, going to be working in favor here for Trident now if they are familiar with this setup. But that's a very fast timing onto the catwalk here for Av Avon, actually. This will be unexpected by Trident. However, with uh, digs on that orb, on the crossover or the A area, that's going to definitely be really helpful here. Zerts is going to win his duel against Sheep as well. And Avant Garde looking like they want to burst through middle now. There is Diggs laying in fire from crossover. And they are just sandwiching them at the moment. They're stuck in the choke yeah, points. The jumping, jumping headshot shot there. Wonderful by Stevie. And there he's finishing up with the spray on Dev. So it's certainly looking very clean here so far for Trident. Six rounds to the zero avant-garde. Not really able to break them. Sheep, we can see him trying to open up opportunities for his team at, you know, with the AWP, but it's not really been working out so far, and it's leaving a lot to be desired. And before they can really get any, any rushes or set plays going, or even get some positioning, uh, let's say on Catwalk, it seems to be that Trident are doing a good job in shutting them down, and they are switching their CT setup quite often as well. We've got two players on long here. Not the three players on A as we've seen previously. And Diggs already opening things up. Sheep goes down. Another so easy frag. Very, very easy stuff here for Diggs. Going for the no scope. Doesn't unfortunately get it. Devk going to peek around on long. In game leader left here now. Able to pick up Diggs, but a lot left to be desired still here for Avant Garde. This is small consolation considering the fact that this is. Uh, Potentially going to be the seventh round that they, got, they are going to lose in a row. You see Devke making his way up to see what he can get done. He has the bomb in his hands. Seems that quick uh, one tap, and he does get it onto Ares, but a timely peek from Stevie will dispatch of him. And that's 7 to 0 now. As Trident still look pretty unstoppable, and their bank is quite intimidating, to say the least. Avangarde are beginning to fall behind now. They need to really get some more picks in. If they definitely need to, they seem to be lacking on the entry and pushing onto any sites. They seem to be sitting back. I, th I think they're going to have to push a bit more, be a bit more hard wearing. It seems like they are struggling to win some of these angels as well. Uh, has going to try to open up long. He does get the kill onto Shads. So that's uh, a really nice way to start the round here. That's the most promising opening we've seen to a round here for Avant Garde since they've been buying their. Uh, their rifles, and they're going to make their way through middle at the moment. You can see a, a pretty defensive but effective setup here from Trident. They have basically given up the A site and can go for flanks, can go for retakes, and can hold long if A is taken for the B players to rotate and try to support through catwalk. So it's kind of actually it's actually a nice setup. I like it, but looks like we're going to get some aggression coming in as they try to work out what's going on. 
into digs once again. Lovely pick onto short there. Looks like they're going to push through middle. We've got exerts smoked off, luckily. Ares alone on the site. It's going to be up to the task here with the M4. At the back doesn't get anything, though. And that is a clean entry. Four players for Avant-Garde with the bomb to be planted. This is looking quite fantastic for Trident. They've got so much cash. Three on four. Weapon advantage. They're absolutely going to go for this here. Just waiting on that flank coming in on Upper Dark. And it is going to be Stevie who takes the frag on to Chris. Looking at extra damage done here. Sheep goes down by the big box. And it is a Steve massacre. So it's really, it seems really difficult here for Avant Guard to really get op you know, many opportunities there. I mean, they got the opening pick on Long. And uh, they're able to, to then move into middle. A very but, clean yeah. retake, though, for Trident there. I don't think they lost a single man retaken B site. No, they, uh, th yeah, they, they, they were left with on a three on the four and came out with three men still standing. So, uh, very, very good from them. And uh, the way the orbs have been moving around here for Trident has certainly been very effective. And I do like how they've, they've been mixing their setups. They've gone back to the three man setup on A once again, the kind of the, the, the initial line of players that's uh, spread out from long. And uh, they don't have a huge presence on middle most of the time. So, this is uh, quite interesting, as Avant should have seen this now. I think they've seen it a few rounds that try and often have two players in the B site and they've given up heavy presence on middle. And once again, they will be finding that out, just just that. It's good smokes, and there it is. That's going to block off the window angle. So it's good work here from Avant Guard now to take map control. Yeah, he's though. taking out PVG in mid. She pushing on to a uh, catwalk. Hopefully, you can get the entry pick onto Stevie. That would leave uh, a site brilliant uh, frag by Chris. Well, Stevie. This is looking quite hopeful for Avant. So Avant Guard now could be setting themselves up to take their first round. Already eight there for Trident as has locks down catwalk. Two quick frags does get flanked by Shads. So. He is going to be the last man, the last hope here for Trident. And once again, their money is uh, pretty strong. So he could decide to save this off, or he could decide to do some extra damage. I mean, we can see that the economy is already quite taxed here for Avant Guard and uh, could add insult to injury if he's able to get a, a couple extra frags. But instead, he's just going to go, go for the safe play with the, the AWP, keep that value alive. And Avant Guard with a much better round there, but we can see that, or at least it feels, it feels to me as though Trident have really nice. CT setups, they've got a good understanding of how to play the basic CT game. It's, they've got clear structure to how they handle various situations, how, uh, or rather when Avant Garde takes certain parts of the map. And generally speaking, it seems like overall they're kind of out executing Avant Garde as well. You seem not to have the, the deepest pool of tactics to delve into as well at the moment. We'll have to see if with the double op setup they can, they can pull out some uh, decent picks here, which does seem to be an important part of their T side. So running out one after another looking for the trades, but down two players already. I think try trying are definitely holding this very defensively. They've uh they've only seemed to have let out the bomb site twice and only once that have they uh, lost actually around because of it. I think I think they're they're playing it very, very well on the C T side. I'm loving their setups. And and they're just not letting Trident get in. I'm um, not letting Avent get in. Oh, this is going to be cool. Is he going to boost over the smoke? Let's see if we can catch this here. We've got Chris and Sheep. I thought they were going to boost. Oh, yep, maybe just there it is. Going to boost over the smoke just a little bit here. Trying to hop and get some information for those opening picks. That's actually not something I've seen commonly used in that area. But it's going to be Diggs who's on point here. Does go down to Chris in the end, but there's still a wealth of bodies behind the defense here on A as they come in from all sides, but they're not even needed. Stevie with the spray down on two players. And that's a nine to one scoreline now, which is going to reset that money bonus for Avant Garden. This is really worst case for them. They do have some money left here. And yeah, this is, this is pretty rough. Absolutely. I mean, Tech Nine's coming out. Not enough money to really buy on enough players to do something effective. Looks like they are going for an A long rush. The lovely Rec 9. There it is. Diggs getting the picks. Pretty easy to hold that. I mean, again, it's it's one of the benefits of having the, the, the triple man set up at the start of the rounds. 
uh, on long. I mean, it's the fastest rush timing uh, for the T's. So you know, you can, you can spread back and have this uh, this this setup where you have kind of guy here, someone able to support on crossover and one on the site. Uh, usually, it's the, it's the AWPA, uh in in the crossover position, and it creates a nice line of of, of uh, possibilities for team play as well as always just having answers early on in the the round. But once again, Pistol's coming in here for Avantgarde is that money was so bad they had to pretty much go for the double eco and tried it looking at a pretty solid defense here already. And they know what's coming and they are all set up to deal with it. So shouldn't be too much of an issue here to close out the last couple players. Okay, there it is. Trident with another easy, easy situation there. And now Avantgarde finally can buy again, but it's already 11 to 1 and their best case is picking up like three more rounds, and with how things are going so far, it's it's uh, hard to see that happening unless Sheep is going to step things up massively here. Going to look for some answers from him. I think Avant really do need to uh, take out Stevie. He seems to be holding the sights wherever they go. There's Stevie there holding an angle, and uh, I, I think he's he's the cause for their uh, little rounds. I mean, we've got Ares here now holding off a uh, B site, but Stevie's been doing some pretty pretty good uh, defenses. Yeah, and uh, it's it's going to be interesting to see how things go on the CT side for Avant Guard because they could look, it's very possible they'll look like a completely different team. Uh, we'll have to see how that goes, but unfortunately so far they're not going to give themselves much to work with if they don't win the pistol. Um, so, not the freedom that uh, Trident have had. But now we're in a, a three on four situation. We've got Upper Dark Control going in the hands of Avant Guard as we have Ares at the back of Plateau. Looking to make sure that uh, he doesn't let anybody in. In goes the smoke that's going to block vision from double doors. And that's a great flash, and they have no Takes idea where he comes them. from. Gets both players, and now it's on Sheep, who's left with just no health at all. Five, uh, sorry, seven points of health on him. So, yeah, not much to expect from this. And Shags keep killing it up there. So it's, uh, it's very, very tough here for Avant God. Bit of a devastating performance from Trident. Definitely uh, good work here from, from the players like this. In fact, all around here for, for Trident, pretty much all the players have been doing a really good job. But as you said, you know, Stevie, a bit of a standout, at least on the, the fragging here. Being a very versatile, very dynamic with his rifle. As you can see Stevie there, one of the, the A players here for Trident. Once again, upper dark control going to Avant Guard, but they've they've not really spread themselves out here. And last time we saw this, Trident worked it out with a, an aggressive peak. That's not going to happen this time necessarily, unless Avant Guard give up the game. Looks like they are going to give the game away here. Going to be running in with the grenades. Dev Kate running straight past the player, and it's looking pretty good here now. Three on three. They've got the bomb. Oh, three on two rather. They've got the bomb site, and Avant Guard might just be able to work with something now. Definitely wanting to look like to take these rounds, or other, like, otherwise they're not going to get enough uh, enough for the CT, and they're leaving themselves very, very little to work with on their CT side. Good chunk of damage there with the spray through the smoke, and in goes Diggs, looking for the angle. There is a player really, really close to him. Peeks out, going to take the frag onto Diggs as uh, Sheep comes in from the back with the Deagle, and that's going to be the round cleaned up here for Avant Guard. So it's good that they hold this time, but that's still 12 to 2. So they've got a long road ahead of them. But a triple orb coming in, just spending all the bank here. Um, I imagine they'll probably have an AK on the floor. We'll have to see if they're going to be able to get anything here. Let's have a look. So two tags, so not bad actually. We do see Trident taking uh, up positions. And actually they didn't have, I think, enough cash. Oh, just barely missed it there. They didn't have enough cash to actually drop another AK, but on the ground. But yeah, okay, there it is. And has going to be taking down Stevie, who's just running straight in there. And Trident getting caught off guard. Trying to be very aggressive. Exert's pushing into the upper, getting out PTG. Shatsky just left on Trident. It looks like Avant Guard are going to be getting one more round in on their uh, T side. But like you said earlier, I think if we, they could look completely different on CT, and uh, we may see a slight comeback. All going to be on that pistol. No chances for redemptions other than that. So 12-3, to 3, the first half score here. Trident with a very dominant 
showing. Great setups. I really, really enjoyed watching how they ro rotated and, ha and had the kind of... Uh, they didn't have a huge amount of different setups, but they had enough kind of versatility and, and uh, some good dynamic play within what they were doing when they got information about how the teams were playing certain parts of the map. So it seemed like they had a good, good structure, good understanding to what they were doing. So, and uh, you know, def definitely uh, been looking at some good, good holds here from the likes of uh, Stevie, Zertz and Diggs. You can see them doing quite well on the scoreboard there. Um, B didn't get as much action there for, you know, for someone like Ares, who, who seemed to be kind of more dedicated to that bomb site. But uh, yeah, l pretty good performance all around from, from the CT side of Trident. Now, Avant are going to get their, their opportunity to prove themselves, but it's certainly not without its challenges, to say the least. We're going to be about playing from that pistol here. Moment, they've got to keep themselves in the moment and not think too far ahead. Very, very important pistol round here for uh, Avantgarde. They're going to really have to hoard it off. If, if they lose this round, it's going to be a very, very uphill climb for them. I think um, I think if, if they play it defensively and then they don't like reveal themselves too much, hold some really good angles on the sides, I think we could see a uh, round for Avant. Looking like they're going to go into B. Straight up rush with the Glock. Taking out Chris. There he's there. Trying to catch any rotating players. He's going to do just that. Lovely. Catches Sheep. Dropping down from Cat. Avant now in a bit of trouble. They are down a man and trying to have that bomb planted on the B bomb site. How on earth are they going to get in here? PTG definitely looking for a pick. Has yeah, defending the site from Stevie. Good work here from Has. He gets three Taking kills in a row. Back. PTG with the last one as well. But this man. Getting that defuse in. He is going to be the man of the round there for Avant. Saving it with three quick kills in quick succession. And Avant are going to give themselves hope. Some chance, some chances here. But it's not over yet because um, Trident only have to eco once before they can get a full buy-in. So Avant Guard are going to have that really awkward spot as the CTs where they're still left with inferior weaponry on the if they win this one. On the following rounds, when trying to buy up with full AKs and then AWP possibly, so yeah, the pressure game is is alive here for Trident. They definitely don't want to lose this round either. Oh. There he's taking out Chris. PTG turning around and getting exert, holding it off with the pistol there, taking out Shadsky. Looks like Defk is gonna peek in, gets the head of Ares, leaving just Stevie. Oh on no! Own. Oh, why oh. would you do it? As <laughs> he's been paid off. And he's going to take down PDG. That's that's unfortunate. At least you don't get minus like 3,300 bucks like you used to. So it's going to. It's, it's only like minus 300 these days or something like that. So. Not, unfortunate not team kill though. Indeed. They do need uh, every bit of cash that they, they can muster. And now you can see that situation I was talking about where they're completely outgunned now that we've hit the, uh, the third round and we get the buy in from Trident. And of course, not the best situation on the grenades, but it is dust too. So. You can definitely work with that. And they're going to go straight in for a quick B play. And it's only PTG here immediately. Oh, but them all. in with the quick spray down. Chris holding it down for long enough. That's great damage done as the rest of the advanced lineup can come in to support. And wow, PTG still alive with the scout at the back of the site. Gets the last two players. Great hold there coming in from Avant Guards. Despite the rushes, that they're holding it off on CT side pretty well. I'm pr pretty pleased with their performance, and I, I think this is going to be a very good second half. The uh, Australians definitely know how to entertain. So I'm really curious to see how things are going to progress once Avant Guard get their AWP going, or their AWPs going. Of course, we know Sheik wants to get on that AWP, and they, they've got the, a similar setup, the three-man opening here. And in fact, it will be a bit of pressure towards Long from Trident, see if they can remove some players from this area, but uh, there they go, actually with a nice angle with that spray down, two more players left alive, I'm going to take down Sheep as well, so two players dead now for Avant Garden, two weapons picked up, this could get a little bit troublesome, already a big loss on the economy, but Ares and Shads can certainly do more with the minute that's remaining on the rounds, and uh, Avant just can't afford to take losses at this point. They need to keep their economy intact. They're definitely not risking it. I can see, you can see him at high. Excellent pick there by PTG. They're nearly going for the jumping scout there. Will Shatsky take him out? But um, as mentioned, uh, Avent are definitely playing it defensively. They don't want to reveal themselves. 
That's a great shot there from Shads as well. Takes down PG on the site. So even more damage done now. As DevK, the in-game leader here for Avant is just playing Shadsky behind the crate. Shadsky only sitting on 18 HP though. We've got two players with 100. All it takes is one bullet. DevK cleaning it up. But three losses though for CT side. Not what they've been looking for. But money seems to be not the problem at the moment. Which is quite the opposite from last round. Uh, Shadsky and Z uh, Diggs will be ecoing. Oh no, Shadsky, Diggs and Stevie. But Stevie's got a full set of nades and I take that all back. <laughs> We've got Shadsky here uh, with the Glock. And uh, DevK picking up uh, well triple warp here coming in for the CT side. Avant, that's very unorthodox there. Not just Sheep, but DevK and Haz as well. But already Sheep going to be able to pick off Ares. And we can see Diggs is... Potentially the man to watch on this round here for Trident as he's now orping and they could really use him in some of these orp jewels that are sure to ensue as there are three of them for avant-garde and it is it can be quite a risky play but so far it's, uh, it's looking quite solid good tag onto Zertz and Trident looking for those picks here has able to just spot pixels through this little gap here on the CT slope. I'm trying to have catwalk, but waiting to see what else they can get as the smokes dissipate. Looks like they want to go for a bit of a B split. Here the smoke's going down to cover CT, but Def K taking out Zertz, taking out Shatsky as well, and a no scope headshot onto PTG there. He's not done yet, there's still one more player to find and DevK is going to pull it off. Four quick kills with the AWP. Excellent work there from the in-game leader himself, proving that he's got quite the skills with that sniper rifle and having that utility on your in-game leader is certainly, certainly awesome to behold. You can see that uh, you know, Titan benefit from that sometimes existence. He used to be a, a very strong strong sniper in source and sometimes pulls it out for Titan. So DevK's got the same capabilities. Once again, the challenge is coming in. They're looking for the trade, but it's not coming quite easily enough. Chris taking down two in a row. It's a great trade here for Avant-Garde. They are looking so much better on the CT side so far. They've definitely found their home on CT side dust. I think, I think we're going to see a very close game now. So we've got three players in middle now for Trident as they try to work out exactly what to do. And... As we can see, PTG is quite close to the door, so he's going to be able to hear any sounds. If there's any stepping at all, PTG is going to spot it, but does go for a peek, picks up a kill, and both players will be spotted, but Sheep, Sheep knows they're coming, able to line up the shot perfectly as Stevie tries to make his way out of an exposed position, gets tagged in the back, in goes the nade, and that is it. Sheep takes the round for his team. 12-9 to nine as Avant-Garde sprints up the leaderboard, up the scoreboard, sorry, and... Uh, Looks like an e well, they can buy up some tech nines and some nades here and keep themselves within a buy as long as they don't go below 2k. But so it looks like they're just going to full out save here. Sheep's definitely performing better with the AWP on the CT side. I think they're, they're playing the triple AWP setup again. I think they're looking to lock these sites down. And I like this idea here from Avant. You can see they're reading their opponent's money. They put three on B at the start of the round this time. Long has been held so effectively in the previous rounds. Trying to uh, rushing into sight here. Let's see if uh, they can actually do much here. It looks like they are going to have a very nice entry. In it goes. He's up onto the upper dark area. It looks like Haz is able to take both players out with the help of uh, the T's themselves. The team kill coming in. Zert's now in a really key position to lock down the back of the plateau. Could this be a retake by Dev? He's just got to spot them. A lovely, lovely uh, pick by from Exerts there. And three kills from him in that round. Definitely key, very key player. As uh, Avantgarde finally dropping one on the CT side. I think that's the first one. Yeah, it's the first one they've lost. They went uh, six in a row there. But Trident now with loads of cash to play with. Two orbs of their own. Now we're seeing a very different setup from Avant. They had three orbs for uh, the previous rounds. And now they've got just one. They're going for the no stack in the middle again. Which is really, really good. Um, in the early early timings, but uh, sheep taking out digs there. So you can see how effective this can be around the 120 timing when T's try to take mill and catwalk control. You can get a really nice angle, and then goes Stevie. He's angry. Just goes straight for the kill. Gets the trade, and P 
PTG never expected that. You can see how surprised he was. His position wasn't quite perfect for an angel like that. And uh, tried it now. Three versus four. Giving the cells some extra breathing room. And stressing that defense a little bit. You can see how they're splitting up two to a site. I want to get the A split going now. But uh, we do have... Let's check out what Sheep is. He's over by B here. So it's like he's largely going to be ineffectual as trying to push the A site initially. He really uses Orping prowess here on the A site, but DevK already taking down the cap push. In comes the remaining two players looking to make their way up onto the site from long. Has on the boxes if they get that far, but it, what a great jump there onto the crates. His teammates coming in as well, and that's another round there for Avant. So 13-10 on the scoreboard. They are creeping up ever so slowly. And uh, two orps now for them, so See, seem like they can really mix in. They've got quite well. They've got quite a lot of uh, play between one and three orbs. It seems. Seems like the three orbs thing was a thing for them. You, you actually never see that in the European scene. I don't think you really often see it in the North American scene either. As a a legit setup, like if if a team has loads of money or, or wants to troll, or it's at the end of the round, uh, sorry, end of the half, maybe you'll see it. But other than that, not so much. So interesting to see that variation here from these Aussie teams. You see the uh, save round gets uh, largely cleaned up. Just one frag from Diggs so far. Shoot, looking uh, to finish it up there. Yeah. Lovely double kill. So, Shoop is definitely skilled with that AWP. He seems to be showing uh, more power on the CT side there. Yeah, his, uh, his uh, aggressive AWPing wasn't nearly as good as, as uh, what appears to be a strength in the passive. The more passive angles, the more, the more reactive play on the AWP. Again, the, the nurse stack there. So I'll have to see if they're able to get a kill, another kill on that one. They've been doing it fairly frequently, and they, I think they have been spotted numerous times. So uh, something you do see teams tend to do is just spray through the smoke into that position because it's so common in the meta game at the moment. But you can see that they're going to pick up another frag because of it. And it just goes largely unpunished here, and DevK gets one through the smoke on a long. That's a crippling blow here to Trident. Avant-garde coming all the way back on the CT is still quite a long road ahead, but this is a great way to start off the round with two early frags. Chris now just keeping into his position. Does he take the trade though? The bomber is spotted. There's a sheep once again locking down the B site. And you can see that they know exactly where the bomb is, they know exactly where Shads is. And he's up against four players. He's got 40 seconds left to work with. We'll spray down the first player, but it does take a lot of damage in the process. And he is going to get naded down by PTG. Or, sorry, Sheep. And Avant Cloud uh, Guard won away now from tying up the match. It looked like it was going to be a complete shutout, a complete whitewash. But it has turned into quite a close match ever since Avant Guard really got themselves rolling. Ever since has picked up the triple kill on the, on the pistol, that... That was really crucial. But another save in it. They're, they're getting so many rounds off of just uh, the saves of Trident. So that's uh, been really helpful also. Good clean up. Far from Avant Guard. 2v5. Two, P, uh, two, two, uh, two P250s. What a mouthful. One remaining. Yeah, definitely it's uh, it's been very interesting to see the usage of these uh, these AWPs here from Avant Guard. I wonder if they're going to they're be rolling at least with two now. I would imagine Sheep would buy one. He's been uh, quite effective on the B site with that so far. And Avant Guard haven't really had to take any aggressive uh, moves. That the, I mean, the extent of their aggression is is the is the Noah stack, which is which is the boost the boost there. So. Um, can show you this is that you just stack here basically and often this is smoked smoked up by the T's and you have this um, usually from a default round from the T's you have this movement where you have like essentially two two or three players going in in dark you have one who goes outside long just to kind of hold long against any CT flanks and you can have uh, one player who kind of holds top middle waiting for his teammates to kind of arrive into mid you leave one in the upper dark area who kind of is there to kind of hold this position. You've got one holding long, you've got three players left, and then their job becomes to take this area. They want to take the close range on the double doors, and they want to take cat control. So what the nurse stack does in this position is for the CTs, it allows them to actually pressure and deal with those three players as they try to get 
that uh, that push around the 120 uh, mark. It's typically. definitely given Avant Garde a good few uh, frags from it, which has made rounds significantly easier for them. Stevie taking out Death Care. Yeah, absolutely, and, and it's been, it's been uh, unpunished largely so far, but the back of that opening kill looks like they are determined to move quickly up catwalk here. Doesn't seem like they're, they're messing about. Stevie's still there looking for a way through on A-Long, but actually, no, he actually turns his attention to middle, has picks up a quick fraggy, hears him running, and now it's a three on three all of a sudden with Trident trying to get themselves on that A-bomb site with the bomb planted. Diggs with a great frag onto Haz. It's going to open up control towards A-Long at the moment, but looks like PTG coming in from short. It's going to be able to take down one. It's going to be a good nade, but it's just down to Sheep. Definitely yeah, one to avant. shine right now. Not looking the right way though, it does get caught, but he still gets the shot onto Ares. But there's not all that much. Uh, Looks like he's going to just time. rush onto Soap with the orb. And turns away at just the wrong moment. Diggs clearing it up and bringing it around for Trident, which is definitely needed, putting the score at 14 13. So I'm trying, trying to reclaim the, the flow of the match here, but. Avant Garde, who had a huge bank rolling in for them. At the moment, you can see they're essentially they're out of cash. So if they lose, if Avant Garde lose this round, it's they're done. They are completely done. They cannot afford to lose this one. They're going to be eco if they do, and that should be an easy follow up for trying to close out the match 16-13. So Avant Garde absolutely need to find a way to win this, and they are going to go the cat push with two players. They do get one frag for it, but can they actually keep this rolling here? Chris able to take down two extra players to even things up to a three and three. PTG goes aggressive here into upper dark, trying to capitalize on the distractions created by his teammates in middle. And he's going in for the flank. PTG he's coming in from behind. behind him. And there it is. He's going to be able to snap <laughs> his neck. And the bomb goes down. That's huge here for avant-garde. Three versus two. Avant-garde looking like they could bring this one back. Still very possible for Trident though. The bomb's been dropped though in lower dark. And excellent pick by Sheep there. Leaving it in a one versus three. Shusky looking to pick up the bomb. Smoked off there. And they have good setup around it. Sheep's just uh, covering that eventuality if he moves into middle. But he goes for the pick-up pick, uh, pick onto the bomb. Dev K does spot it, gets the peak and the frag. And Avant win a very, very key round. Now they're going to be able to actually keep the ball rolling on the buys and Trident themselves are going to be eco. So this is actually quite worrying here because if we look at the money here for Trident, 1500 bucks on two players, 1800 on one, and going they just save. won a round. Even on the following round, they're going to have a very ropey buy at best. They're going to be able to buy AK armor and probably very, very, very few nades. So this is terrible right now for Trident. They could be in a lot of trouble here. They're just going to run in on this save, nothing all that creative. See if they can overwhelm the CTs on the site. Are going to pick up two quick frags and the weapons. Zert's going to go straight to the winner with the orb. Looks for the flick shot, doesn't just land it. Misses that there. So, oh, the CTs are trying to pick up has now. Is that three on two? Surely they're not going to pick this round up with nothing but the Glocks rolling through onto the site and the weapons picked up off the dead bodies of the Avant players but in they go Dev K in a, one, a two on one there and, and Chris gets the frag there seven HP remaining on him he's going to barely be able to take the round and uh, Avant Guard moved to 15 now so against all odds Avant Guard with a huge comeback in this match but it's not over yet there's still one more round to close it out Trident Still able to force this to overtime. You can see getting the bomb down really helped their economy massively. Enabled the purchase of two AWPs. Diggs and Stevie are going to be holding on to those. As we are going to see them working middle with them initially. Smoke does go down though. And there's no one on B at the moment here for Avant-Garde. Taking a little bit of a... A little bit of a risk there at the st right at the start, and it might be capitalized on because Zertz is just walking in at the moment, and they don't Sheep's have position on the defense. This is very gambly right now. Sheep's going to want to get that pick. Sounds like he missed it there. No defense at all. They're going to have to go for a five-man retake, and in the meanwhile, there is a man who's actually on catwalk here. I believe it's Zertz. So he could be a massive round changer here for his team. But Diggs is already going to be picking up one there. I think, I believe through the smoke. And actually, it was Ares. And look at that free kill on to Sheep. Now they know there's one in dark. And they're all stuck in front of the site. This is a disaster for Avant-Garde. 
I'm trying to get in there. Stuck on the door there. <laughs> Locking each other through the window. And Trident looking fantastic. And the tied up. That's going to be overtime then. So the overtime rules here for the Face It League is MR5 16K. So against all the odds indeed. I, they look so, so awful, I have to say, on the T side, Avant Guard. They, they were just looking for picks. They, they couldn't find anything. It looked almost too easy for for all the rounds to, to go the way of Trident. But then equally, when Trident were switching sides onto T, they had equally, if not more problems, finding openings and, and closing rounds. So it's it's really interesting how, how CT-sided this was. And I think in, in large part, you can attribute it to the fact that these teams are, you know, having lineup changes and uh, you know mixing their structures up does tend to throw a wrench into the works for your T rounds. It makes it a little bit more difficult. But um, yeah, generally speaking, it's a very interesting match. And as you pointed out, Sheep, who was so in theory so key for yeah. for Avant Garde on their T rounds, didn't really show up. And it wasn't until CT that we really saw him actually be able to shine. Unfortunately, on that last round, though, he did leave the B site just a second before they began pushing in, and uh, it, it really didn't help them with their defense. So a 5-on-5 five five retake is definitely not what you want to be doing, especially on B site, where there's so many angles to hold. Um, considering how well Avant Guard played their uh, CT half, only giving up three rounds in total, I, I think they really let themselves down on that last game, but they, I think they might have it in the CT uh, in the other time. They've... Uh, they kn they know how their CT side works, and it's definitely stronger than Trident's. Interestingly, um, uh, Sheep, for those wondering, I, th I mentioned before, he, he came from uh, Team Fortress uh, 2, and apparently he's only had around like 700 hours in Counter-Strike. So he's he's kind of, he's quite new if you compare him to some of, some of the old vets who come from 1.6 and Source. He's you know, uh, limited experience in the game, and uh, his team is trying to build off of off of his orping style, so gonna see him winning a duel there Excellent against Diggs pick. again. Good timing on the angle, and PTG wants to move in aggressively behind that pick. In he goes as they have the nades yeah. out, and he spots the bomb. That's massive, and he spots two extra players, and they know there's only three left here. So we can see the rotation starting to come in. Devk is gonna feel much more liberated, liberated to actually push the long area if he really, really wanted to take. A small risk, but they do have a man, a man advantage, so it's keeping things. Looks like he chill. might get the flank kill, Devke. He will indeed, and he spots the bomb again. He's going to tr try to smoke it off. Keeps the pressure alive, and you can see the distraction coming into play because Chris moved in from the back as they att uh, were attracted to, uh, to Devke. And uh, he's going to chill up there with the bomb. Ares picks up Chris. Devke, though. With the perfect angle, and that's the round closed out by Avant Guard. And you got to say that it is definitely going to be helpful to Avant Guard to actually get to continue on with their CT side, moving in with the momentum that they that they generated on the CT side previously, because they had an awful T half at the start of the match. So it's going to be Trident who also had an awful T half, trying to save their match uh, on the second half of O time with with that going for them again. So it's. Definitely an easier situation for Avangard, I think, in this overtime. But Avan is definitely going to be wanting to get all the CT rounds they can get. As, as, as we've seen, it's definitely their stronger side, and they don't want to be leaving it too difficult for their uh, T side. Big presence in middle there from Avangard. Sorry, from tri uh, tri uh, Trident. Just taking Catwalk now. A little bit late on that one. Would expect to see a potential angle finding to see where the CTs are and see if they can find some picks onto the A site. But it's going to be a bit of a push here, we can see from uh, Avant Guard. They're going to work out what's happening before it hits them because of this upper dark take. And that's going to be very detrimental to Trident's chances here because you can see how they are being constricted slowly. Look how close Avant Guard are getting to their positions, just completely completely violating their map control. Great shot there through the door from Sheep as they spot the T's running across tr and they're getting completely sandwiched here, all stuck in the doors and crushed by the defensive lines of Avant Garde. And it's just uh, it's left over. The bomb down in front of the doors and 20 seconds left on the round. He's got a full lineup to deal with. Walks into the smoke. 
And he might actually just pass through unnoticed here. They have no idea where he is. <laughs> <laughs> and has finishing it up there. So three orbs again for avant-garde. Definitely seems to be a thing. Um, Two orbs for Trident there. Seems to be a very orb heavier game. Okay, that's that's good. They did drop an orb. I think I think I still think three orbs is very ambitious, no matter which side you're on. I think three orbs definitely means uh, you could be giving away orbs to the uh, opposition. It's it's a lot more risky, especially like we saw uh, in the second half there when. Uh, I think it was Trident were ecoing. They managed to pick up two orbs from the uh, avant-garde. I can, I can see how it can make sense, but we'll have we'll hold that thought for the moment as we have Trident moving up Catwalk into uh, Dev K's process very soon here as he's holding it down. The AWP does get the shot onto Stevie, just uh, making his angle a little bit shallower, making it uh, a deeper peak for Zerts. As you can see him creeping around, and he's going to get the shot onto Dev K. It's going to open up the A bomb site now for Trident as Avant's come in on the retake. They do have Haz straight up there on short, immediately there to respond. Picks off the head of Shaz Lovely. and gets the second as well. Good retake from Haz and picks up the AWP. So they have themselves two orbs. Haz's aim is definitely on point this game. Uh, he, he's been he's been a great he's been retaking the sites. I think he's been the man that's going in there. And uh, yeah, he's been really clutch for them. That's yeah. I, th I think you're right. He's, I think he's been the most clutch for them in these in those retakes. He won some really key rounds for them. Definitely, definitely been an important player. Defk just missing the shot onto Stevie on short. I say split hit from Trident, and uh, that's uh, now it's just a long long rush as the the cap push is completely annihilated, and we've seen Oomp there on digs. So Avant kind of wrecking them here in this round. Trident yet to find all that much. Getting tagged as they jump across even. As uh, they're going to look for the bomb plant from Zertz now. It's a good frag there from a uh, Ares. As he does take down Haz. It's PTG on the wrap that finds one. And now Zertz. He's got two positions to worry about. Does see the grenade. He knows the trajectory. Spots the player. Gets good damage. 20 health left on Sheep. Then goes the flash, in comes the peak, and there's the shot. Lovely teamwork there by Avant for retaking the site. PTG's definitely been flanking a lot this game. He's uh, been trying to get behind those enemy positions and trying to shut them down from the other side where they're least expecting it. So, 19 to 15, and Avant Guard looking just as they did in the second half where they were playing CT. Just pretty solid against Trident's the way Trident wants to play. We've got only Stevie on the AWP here for uh, Trident's. And once again, they're going to try to break through long. They have the flashes. That's going to give them the early positioning into the A-long area as Avon have to contract their defensive line further back into the A-site itself. And we can see how they've changed their setup now. They've got FK on the site, looking towards short. PTG there below, as well as Chris. So, not the strongest uh, setup here on the A bomb site, but they do have quite a few players there. So they're going to have to they're gonna have to rely upon that at the moment. They have two players in pit. I've tried it. Uh, now just moving back through middle. See if they can reclaim some control of middle and cat at the moment. Get this A split working for them. If they can wrap at the right time, it would be great. But this is a great move here from Avant Guard. They've actually uh, moved into middle to just basically cut off the, the cap play completely as the push is coming in from long at the same time. We do have them making their way up. The bomb is dropped now. Dev K with two very nice kills as Trident do have the A bomb site, but no bomb. That's now the dilemma for them. Spotted the top of Dev K's hat, but Dev K takes it out. Stevie goes down. Big round there from Dev K, and that's going to be a really powerful half. All five rounds for Avant Guard. All five. That's a lot for Trident to live up to. They did well. They they obviously proved that they have a good CT side also. But but so yeah, and 
You know, I can see why the, the multitude of orbs actually works in the way that the game has been played by both teams because both teams go for a heavy pick style. I mean, the, the weakness of the AWP is if you get overwhelmed or if there's set plays. We see little play like that coming out from the T rounds. It's mostly just pick face, but that said, in comes a fast rush here. No nonsense play. Has with an entry. Get traded upon by Ares, but there is another trade from Chris to make it. One man to the good for Avant. God, they, are they going to close it out right here and now? So they could very well do that. They got the advantage. Bombs down now. Running back through that smoke there. Smart plays. Three on three. Could this be it for Avantgarde? Really fast round. Flash comes over the top. Chris there dealing with the players, lopping off the head of two, and there's just one left. It's Diggs. Gets Trying the shot. Trying for the jumping block. And he's got more players to deal with. And the time is running out, and there you go. Avantgarde going to take that one, and again, a surprising result for me. After seeing the first half, I, I mean, it looked like Trident were were just going to win the match. They just they looked really good. And then it just seemed like it just seemed like both teams struggled so much on the T side. Yeah. That's just it just that came down to the T side completely. Avant Guard's uh, CG side definitely helped them out there. Um they they were very very strong and winning all five rounds on the first half of overtime definitely gave them that uh second half of overtime advantage. I think with that just straight up B rush classical classical uh, tactic and they pulled it off fine. Absolutely. Um, all right, so starting off things with a, an overtime game. That's fantastic. All right, guys, we've got uh, two more matches coming up here. Best of ones for Face It League, Oceania. So, Oceania, I should say. <laughs> and we'll be back right after the break, so stay tuned.